Hey, what's up, everybody? Uh, welcome to Xbox Nation. We have uh, Blackie Lebowski here. We have Iron Wolf here, and uh, original member. Too much food uh, back for at least a little bit. He's got to go in a little bit, but um, he'll be back. And I think uh, Titanfall Princess will be joining us uh, as soon as she works out some technical problems. And Mooch said he'll be joining, although a little bit late. Uh, it's probably one of the reasons I started a little bit late with this podcast. Um, but thank you guys for taking time out on your Wednesday to join us. It's always appreciated. Uh, you know, uh, there's a there's a lot to talk about. First thing I want to talk about, obviously, is this Xbox event um, that just kind of sprung up out of nowhere. Apparently, this event's been known about for a little bit, but who would have guessed it? Because there's been no media coverage whatsoever, and this is an Xbox event, and there's nothing. Phil Spencer's going to be there. Apparently, there's going to be games shown off, and uh, the spring lineup is going to be talked about. We're going to get Probably a reveal or two, obviously. Um, you know, and, and and so far we've absolutely heard nothing from these major sites. Um, I think I got first whiff of it from um, the Windblog site or whatever that is, and then some of the smaller sites like Xbox Mad was running with it or whatever because that's a legit site. And you look into it, and yes, they're holding an event February twenty fifth. I mean, what do you guys think about no, this? Let me just make this clear, perfectly clear. This is an Xbox event. It's not a Windows 10 event that has a little bit of Xbox. It's full Xbox. It's all yeah. Xbox. They're keeping an Xbox. Yeah, it's an Xbox. It's an Xbox event. Yeah, that, I mean, I wouldn't even call it anything else. It's just it's Xbox. I mean, yeah. I, I would I would hope that they're going to take advantage of this and really put out something interesting that we've been asking for at least and at least two surprises. Um, now I know Recore was pushed back, and I, I w I'm still hoping that we at least get to see some sort of footage, even if it's like alpha. Um, and I'm sure we're gonna see a few things like the Avatar revamp that they got coming out, and uh, the revamp they're doing for the gamer score, and a few updates probably. Yeah, I was hoping maybe they'll show the Gears of War for multiplayer beta footage or something like that. You know, give more news on that. Maybe a CD CG trailer on that. And, yeah, maybe even Phantom Dust or, you know, a few other things. And yeah. some of the rumors that we're hearing about, like, Ro was it Robo Raid, a new intellectual property, you know, trademark. Yeah, they, they, have a, they have a few. I mean, that sounds kind of weird to me, that uh, particular one. Um, Do you think this could be the anniversary event? Um, no, this isn't the anniversary event. They would they would say you know it's anniversary event. Didn't they hold something similar? I think last February as well. But um, no, but that was strictly Windows only. Was it okay? Yeah. Well, th this is to, I guess okay because they have a lot of things coming out for um, E3, and there's probably not enough time uh, you know to cover everything because remember they had to split everything up and they're. They're supposed to, you know, we have games coming out before E3. You know, there's we, we still need to see some more Quantum Break stuff. I would expect that to be there. Maybe show off some um, some of the, you know, give us, we need some dates on this stuff is what I'm saying. Like, it's about damn time to get some dates on stuff, right? Yeah, well, like, when, you think, when you think about it, crap, you see Aaron Greenberg changing, changing his profile picture to the OG Xbox. So I, I saw that. I have a feeling there will be some sort of OG Xbox thing happening at that event. I mean, do you think do you think it might be something like backwards compatibility, or it might be something like they did with Rare Replay, where they have like you know t ten of the best Xbox One's game on a disc? I think, man, they're gonna do something like um, they're gonna show us a lot of uh, a lot of games, man. Like, well, uh, it's it's a lot of games coming this year. You know, like uh, Microsoft has the money, you know, to to do what they want to do. I, I see this Elite controller, and I'm like. I don't know, February 25th, it's going to get here, and we'll definitely see some stuff, uh, get some dates. They'll be here, but then I think they got some new shit, man. They're going to yeah. surprise everybody because, I mean, the media, they've been kicking them the whole time. You know, they, no matter what they do, they, they can't possibly do anything well, and we got a, what, a fucking new UI, elite controller, great games, a, a good backlog of games. So, I mean, if I was Microsoft, I'd be like, yeah, bitch. February twenty fifth, we coming with we coming with something for you, man. Yeah, that's what I would do. But where is this all coming from? Because I didn't see no tweet from Mike Yabaro or Phil Spencer about this event, and it comes from this Windows blog. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. you know, to me, I find it pretty strange because, like I said, Aaron or anybody from the Xbox team, they haven't really tweeted about it. 
Well, yeah, they're they're a huge Xbox site though, so I think that uh, you know I I, w- I would assume that this is this is going to be legit, and and it's and it's said that they're going to cover th- their spring lineup. You know, look, we know the the release date for Quantum Break. Outside of that, we don't know Jack Squat. You know what I mean? Like, honestly, we know nothing. Uh, and you, if you look at it, right, Killer Instinct Season 3 is launching in March. What release date? You know, we're probably going to get some information, see some of those fighters, right? I mean, that would be the perfect time to show that off. Uh, tell us when the Gears 4 beta is going to start, right? Maybe give us a little preview of that because that's supposed to happen in the spring. Uh, you know, maybe give us a little tease of ReCore. Uh, show us some of the crackdown multiplayer. Clear that up because there's misinformation out there that, Oh, the multiplayer is launching this year, and you got to pay sixty bucks for it, but no campaign. From what I've understood, it's always been that we're going to get the multiplayer beta this summer, um, and then the full game, I guess, would probably launch either later this year or next year. I'm going to guess next year. See, but, I actually um, thought I actually thought they won a beta. I thought it was a multiplayer, kind of like the opposite of Metal Gear. You see what I'm saying? Because they got the uh, the multiplayer like a month later after the campaign. So I yeah. thought it would probably be the opposite. You get the multiplayer first and a campaign at a later date. That would be terrible because, like, how would you get that as far as, like, a physical thing? You're going to get a disc and then just, like, play online? I, I think they want to test it. I think that's why it was always considered the beta. And if you go back and look at, um, what was it? Did they did they show Crackdown at E3 or was that Gamescom? Gamescom. Okay, at Gamescom, right? It said multiplayer beta next summer. Next right. year, so I think that it's definitely going to be the multiplayer beta. Um, I've, they, I've, they this wanna, is what they, I think. I, I think they're going to announce uh, more Xbox games coming to PC, uh, whether it's a new game or whether it's a game we know about. They'll probably be. Uh, I think. Uh, who is it? Food just mentioned that there could be like an OG Xbox hits collection or something yes, like that. They exactly. may release that. You know, uh, I wouldn't mind that. Maybe if they up res it or uh, add, add achievements, right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I think they would do something like that. They're Microsoft and uh, Team Xbox. We we all know here they're not the type of team to half-ass something whenever they want to do something. They actually go for it and do a full fledged, you know, full force, you know. But like, I gotta agree agree with crap. We're we're in the dark when it comes to like release dates and knowing certain yeah. things. Hell, we're even in, in the dark over this damn conference, like. We, I never heard of it up until three minutes before this show when you mentioned it, crap. So, yeah. you know, I would all I want to see, man, is games, 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 release dates and games. I don't want to see no VR. I don't want to see no AR. I don't want to hear about streaming to the PC. I just want release dates and yeah. games. Well, I mean, look, they're obviously going to um, show us, you know, whether we like it or not as Xbox fans, some of the mix with the PC stuff like – you know, Fable Legends obviously is going to get again. That's getting an open beta this spring too. So there's like, you know, they've got a lot to cover. I can understand and think this is completely legit that they are going to cover a lot of this stuff for the spring. You know, yeah. we still got Halo Wars two stuff to look at. Uh, you know, they they could they could still announce Forza Horizon three. I mean, the stuff that we know about. And like I said, guess what? Yeah. Just was renewed. Phantom Dust trademark, right? We all thought this was dead. When was the last time you heard me talk about it? Whenever somebody brought it up, I said, well, I refuse to talk about it. Um, you know, as far as I'm concerned, it's not happening until they say, until something comes up that it's happening. And now this has come up right before this event. Hey, I don't really believe in coincidences, people. So I think that this is something that's legit and we're going to get it. Um, and that's good. You know, I know people want that JRPG. You know, this was a pretty good one on the original Xbox. So I'm happy to see. Uh, it coming to the Xbox One as well, and I'm hopefully this year, right? I mean, yeah. Think- well, Ken Lob did mention that you know he wanted to take this uh, IP in a new direction, and they wanted it to be an open world JRPG or something like that. He did yeah. say over 30 hours, and yeah. it's not going to be arena based like you know the original on the OG Xbox. So maybe we could see fan. Maybe we could see some of the stuff from this year at this Xbox event, and wherever we. See- E3, some of it could be based on next year. Now, See what do, I'm saying? Do we know what studio is working on that? We have no yeah. idea. The original one that was working on that, um, I guess Microsoft didn't like what was going on, although it looked good to us. I mean, we've seen some leaked screenshots, and then, of course, the media ran with this whole thing that it, you know, Microsoft is bad and evil, and uh, they closed down the studio, and you know, uh, they didn't want to fund this or that, or it was getting too expensive or whatever. See, 
To, I mean, I don't understand. Uh, I, okay, I understand it's a good game. If that's all fine and dandy, but I, I don't understand why they chose this game. Like, why not something like Blue Dragon? Well, a... <laughs> Phil, like, here's the thing. Like, when you're the head of Xbox, right, you have some... One of the perks, I think, is you can get games that you like made, and, and Phil really <laughs> liked this IP, right? It was a very kind of niche IP, and it still is. And who knows what kind of pricing they're going to do with it, if they're going to do the free-to-play type model. No. Or, no you don't I think? Hope I, no, hope I hope not. Well, I remember Ken Lobb talking about kind of that model. He goes, maybe we'll go the Killer Instinct type model, um, you know, along those lines. And, uh, you know, so I don't know. I don't, I don't really like that particular model per se. I think it works with Killer Instinct, but I don't really like that for a lot of their first-party stuff, you know what I mean? Because if you think about this, right, let's say that this game does become free-to-play and or it is a free-to-play game, then you have big-time first-party Microsoft exclusives, a bunch of them, I think four, that are basically using a free-to-play model. You'll have Killer Instinct, you'll have Fable Legends, you'll have... Um, Phantom Dust, and Sea of Thieves is looking like it's going to be a free-to-play MMO. And you know I think I mean? that's toxic, man. Look, here's the thing. Like, I just told y'all earlier, I bought Shadow Mordor used. It was 15 bucks. You know, I can't go to uh, wherever I get used games and get a free-to-play game used. I'm sure I could get it used for, like, let's say 10 bucks, 15 bucks, and then I still can't get all the content I just paid for. I have to shell out additional money. I don't want to have... I, to be honest, I haven't even really played uh, Killer Instinct because the free-to-play, the microtransactions and all that stuff what has turned me away from the game itself. You know, I don't want that. It's toxic to me. Like, did, I don't... Did you download the free ver the uh, the Games with Gold version? Um, if there was a Games with Gold version, I probably overlooked it since I already had it. It just so came out. Oh, okay, yeah. Well, the the one that just came out also included the first arcade uh, version and like all and a bunch of the uh, you know it was it was the forty dollar version. It was like the complete package from season one, dude. It was like really good. Um, you know, it came with like a bunch of the uh, different outfits and stuff like that. But Killer Instinct is a really good fighter. Like that, I can understand at, from a fighter aspect for this reason, right? You can buy the complete season for twenty bucks, right? Or like uh, some people just like a certain character. So I can understand why they would why they would do it that way, right? To, so to me, that makes sense. But as far as uh, you know, I guess to each their own, you know. But to me, it just is a waste. You have a big uh, first-party studios making your AAA games, and then to make them free-to-play doesn't really make sense to me. You know, I'm not. I've never really been a big fan of that. Well, heard, but apparently, Lionhead are not only working on Fable Legends; they're also working on a new IP. So we could well, possibly should, yeah. see that sometime soon, whether it's the event or E3 or maybe GameStop. We gotta say this too for everybody who's watching. They have season two. If you go to Games to Gold on your Xbox One, you can get Season 2 Killer Instinct for $10. They have the regular, the what Kraft was just talking about, the Killer Instinct for free. So you can get the whole game for fucking 10 bucks. Yeah. Like, yeah. yeah, you can get the first two seasons just in time for the third season, which I think, uh, you know... We're gonna we're gonna get something about that like really really soon, and I'm really excited to to get into that. I know Titanfall Princess. I know you're a big fan of that uh, franchise. I see you streaming it. Um, are you excited for season three? You can double dutch in here, high and dry with Nancy. Hello. <laughs> okay. Well, it looks like she's just she's just listening. She's not really participating. Yes, she's not. So, also the rumor is that the Conquer reboot is coming, and we might get something on that. Um, you know, and what you know, what's interesting about this is uh, I forget who the guy was, but he said something about he was doing voiceover work for a, a game um, with a very uh, famous squirrel, right? So that could possibly be Conquer. And my initial thought was, if he's playing Conquer. You know, maybe he's not playing Conquer. Maybe he's playing someone else. But if he is playing Conquer, then uh, maybe they're just doing a complete reboot on this, uh, which could be needed or could be a sequel. I don't know. To me, if they do Conquer, it has to be dirty. It has to be like that R-rated kind of filthy, uh, you know, like adult humor. Set. Yes, it has to be that. Like I played the Project Spark stuff, and that was funny. I mean, I understand they had to keep it within a certain way. It did have that kind of humor, um, even though it was kind of censored and stuff. But I think they have to push the limits even more um, because we live in a day and age where 
you know, political correctness runs amok. So I think it would be good and would actually maybe get them a little bit of, uh, of, of added publicity by, you know, having him go back to being kind of this asshole squirrel who gets drunk and, like, pisses on people and stuff like that. You know what I mean? To me, that's funny as hell. You don't see that stuff anymore. Everybody's so afraid to kind of uh, go on those boundaries. I mean, what are you guys' thoughts on that? Because this year, technically, at this event, we or maybe even at E3, we could be hearing about these other games that we don't know about, and, you know, it looks impressive. You know, Phantom Dust, A New Conquer. Um, we've been hearing rumors about a Banjo Kazooie, a new one, you know, a, a Battle Toads. Apparently, they're digging deep into Rare's thing because what are they like, 35 years old as a developer, or 30 years old as a developer, or whatever it is. So they want to celebrate that in a big way. And even though Rare might not be doing all these games, they could have easily outsourced some of them to other developers, and they could do a really good job, as we've seen by Killer Instinct. I mean, look, the first season of Killer Instinct was handled by a different uh, developer. And now uh, Iron Galaxy is doing season two and three, and they're doing an even better jobs. So we've seen that these other companies can do really good jobs with these. I mean, what are your guys' thoughts on this? What what kind of IPs do you want to hear about being announced? Maybe older ones, maybe rare ones. What do you guys want to hear? I think, yeah, I think uh, we're definitely going to hear some about Battle Toads. Where I think that's going to be an E3 thing. They're going to save it for E3, but a conquer game. I think it's possible, and I think it was sometime last year, it was on Reddit, uh, there was a rumor that Insomniac turned down an offer to make Conquer, remember? I don't know if you guys remember yeah. that. And uh, obviously since then, they'll probably been looking for a studio, and perhaps they found one. Uh, it, it could be any studio. It could even be, it could be, it could even be Rare. That yeah. could be the second game that they're working on. So well, rare is two teams. Just like, even what? Lionhead, because remember Lionhead's working on something too. Well, Lionhead supposedly is working on another um, IP, another RPG, like a dystopian or like a a, a punk kind of you know whatever cyber. Yeah, kind of yeah yeah right. So so it's like, but but and it makes sense because look. Phil Spencer is notorious. If there's one thing that I've kind of heard through the grapevine about Phil, Phil Spencer is that. He really, really hates um, developers that take a long time. Like, from what I understand, he loves Remedy games, but hates how long they take making games, right? Um, and I, I've heard this from more than one person. Uh, he ha he likes his games to come out when they're supposed to come out and on a schedule. Um, Vinehead Studios, their last game was 2010. Uh, you know, with the Journey. Yeah, well, Fable the Journey was the, their secondary team, like the yeah. smaller team, but their main unit uh, who did Fable 3 was done in 2010 and haven't done anything since then. So we're six years in, and we have nothing. Um, you know, And so I think that it's time to put up or shut up for them. You know, They've delayed Fable Legends. Uh, they've went, that's what they wanted to do, apparently. Um, I'm sure that Phil and the company maybe would have wanted uh, Fable 4, because look, Fable 3, even if you weren't a fan of that, that game sold fucking extremely well. You know, you're talking like four, five, six million copies, um, and it was a bit of a turnaround because they came out with that just two years after Fable 2, which was one of my favorite RPGs. I love that group, and if you, you know, you can't really talk about Legends if you're in the beta, but they're adding a lot of stuff to that to make you it know, more Fable. You know, crap, crap. Do you know the one game I'll really love to see? What's that? Gang Heist. If they actually bring Shanghai and they, you know, outsource it, you know, if the coalition outsourced it to a different studio, have this game made, this game it could have a ton of potential. You know, what I mean, this could be our siphon filter, if you know what I'm saying. Yeah. This could well, be they, our Metal we, Gear. Look, the Xbox needs, and not just Xbox. You know, like like we're Xbox Nation, obviously, and we're Xbox fans, but this generation needs some of those killer new IPs, right, like that are pushing the industry a bit. Um, you know, Halo did that for the original Xbox. Gears obviously did it for the 360. Um, but what's done it so far this generation, I don't know. I mean, we're two years in. And well, Sunset Overdrive was supposed to be that game, but yeah. you know, unfortunately uh, the community didn't really go out and support this game. They were just too busy playing Call yeah. of Duty. Yeah, well, well, not just that, though, Wolf, but check this out, because I love Sunset Overdrive, but it's like after you beat it and you play a little bit of the uh, multiplayer, which there was no competitive multiplayer, you're done with it. You know, like the things about, if you look at, like, okay, well, Halo, the first one, 
um, had that brilliant story and, and people were but the second one was what really got people hooked you know because that multiplayer you've got to have a game that has that phenomenal single player and that phenomenal yeah. multiplayer yeah I this, think that's also what overdrive didn't really well, have a so overdrive was just over a lot of people's heads man I've got I've got a lot of time in it and I mean you've heard I've heard people say where's the run button it's like literally like the is, is a game where you have to like put some time in like I got piranhas and shit jumping out of my gun like fuck. <laughs> like I think Grim Reaper pops out and starts whacking people with his with his whatever the fuck he has that he fucks niggas up with after they die. And it's cool as shit, dude. And I, I watched people in the Xbox community, you know who you are. I seen you re- reviewing this shit and you fucking had the T and Teddy at the very end. Like you didn't fucking play Sunset Overdrive. That's one of the best X, that is one of the best games I've ever played in my life. So, like, I think a lot of people, I don't know, man, That that's a game for a gamer. Like, if you're not a gamer, yeah. that you just might miss some stuff in that shit because, uh, and anybody who plays it, they're going to be like, yep, Lebowski knows what's up. Because, like, somebody poured their heart and soul in that shit, and you got motherfuckers like, where's the fucking run button? It's like driving yeah. on the power line, you stupid cop. Yeah, I, I, yo, Lebowski, I had people complaining about, like, oh, you you can't even drive no cars in that game. Like, motherfucker, like, your character moves faster than yeah. a car. You know what I'm saying? I, I think I think what, what what the next big thing, is, like, crap's talking about, like, that defining game, I think that's what they're betting big on with the cloud. I mean, we still haven't gotten Crackdown, and I don't have huge hopes for it because I, I wasn't a huge fan of the, the first two uh, but uh, I think that's what they're probably going to try to do with the cloud, show people that they can do something different this generation and maybe get people feel like they need to depend on the cloud or want their games to start integrating the cloud more and more uh, the, into their games because they feel like that's the future of gaming. And I think that could possibly be it because I really don't think it'll be VR, which the competition's trying to do. So I'm pretty well- it has to be well, the cloud. Well, check this out, all right? The, yeah, that would have been cool, but why not a new IP with that then to show us, okay, this is what this generation's all about because Gears was what last generation was all about. You know, that cover base, that horde mode, introduced all that stuff. You look at the stuff that Xbox has, Xbox has always been innovative when the, other, when the competition wasn't, right? Xbox Live, innovative. Halo, Halo 2 was innovative. Nobody thought that you could do a sandbox shooter like that on a console online. Nobody thought you could do something like that. Microsoft proved them wrong, and now it's the standard, and people like take it for granted or whatever. Um, Gears of War, that that pop and lock. I saw that. You know, pop and lock, pop and lock, pop and lock. Third third person cover based shooter. Now everybody does that, from Uncharted to Mass Effect. Everybody covers that. And what game doesn't have a horde mode now? That's inventive. We need that. Yes, the cloud is cool, and it could be Crackdown 3, could be that, but this game should have, the game that's using the cloud showing off this stuff should have been a new IP, and it should have come earlier, because I'm going to be honest, and what's going to be a shortened generation, all in all likelihood, needs to have a game to really justify the purchase of that system. Halo did it for the Xbox, Gears did it for the 360. Uh, yes, there is the Halo 5, which I feel like there's plenty of reasons to justify the purchase of the Xbox One, but where's that new thing? You know, hopefully Quantum Break. I mean, that could be, that looks phenomenal to me. You know what I mean? Like, like the, rap. But yeah. yeah, like I agree with you. We had Halo for the OG Xbox, Gears for the 360. This, this gen, it really should have been Shanghai. I know I've said it before, but that game, to me, every time I look at that trailer, I just think, wow, you know, this could use you know, destructible environments, cloud computing, all kinds of shit, single player, multiplayer. Uh, it could have been their next big game. Uh, they should have really, you know, outsourced it to a different studio, you know, get a helping hand. Uh, they I don't still could have. They... Look, he likes, Phil likes new IPs, right? I mean, we know that he likes new IPs, and this is going to be a year for it. Um, there's stuff coming, you know. You've got to... That game is 80% complete, and it's been shelved. Well, so, yeah, that Black Tusk, or who who used to be, you know, who's now the Coalition, they were working on um, a couple of different things for years before um, they switched over to doing Gears. Uh, so, so yeah, and I think I guess Gears is 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 almost done because yeah. it's coming out sooner than we expected, which I'm excited for because I'm a big Gears fan, and I think that they're 
Microsoft sees that maybe that their audience is leaning more towards Gears or, um, you know, I, Halo is great. I love Halo. But I think people, they're expecting another influx of gamers when they get that new Gears out because I'm going to be honest, Gears Ultimate is fantastic. You know, Wolf, I've been on that a lot. Like, it's... I, I love it, you know, it's, and I can't wait to get that new totally from scratch with new maps and, um, you know, and some of the stuff like you can't plant grenades in Gears Ultimate, you know, because you couldn't do that in Gears 1. I miss that, you know what I mean? Like, uh, there, there's little things that I miss, but I'm, I'm really excited for it. Also, that damn, uh, we call it the sun gun, just as like a joking around, the Hammer of Dawn, though. Uh, unlimited Hammer of Dawn is a little bit OP in my opinion, but, yeah, I understand why it's in there. But, yeah, I'm just, you know, that's the game that I'm super excited for. And, um, you know, I, I just think that, that that Gears might be the big thing for Xbox One, you know. I mean, Halo is great, and I love that. But I think that the diversity is what really people enjoy about the Xbox One. It's like if you're a racing fan, they've got the best racing game. If you're a first-person shooter fan, they hands down have the best first-person shooting game in Halo. Um, you know what I mean? And you're getting all the free content and stuff there. No matter how the media tries to bury that or, or change that around, uh, Halo 5 is fantastic. You know what I mean? They're adding in things all the time. It's free content, free updates. Um, you know, it's constantly updating there, constantly taking input and things like that and putting it in there. Uh, you know, if you want the best third-person person shooter, boom, you got Gears. They've got the best fighter, in my opinion, in Killer Instinct for multiple reasons. Not only do they keep adding to it to keep it fresh, but you can if you even if you're not like an online player like I'll be honest man when I play that game online it's it's stressful as hell like you're sweating your damn your fingers get sore you know what I mean like it's like I can only take so much of that shit you know but I like the fact that I can get I know it comes down to achievements again but I can get achievements playing through the story just progressing through the you know the different modes and stuff without having to play online you know what I mean like you can easily do that and I like that so many games like Mortal Kombat I look online I look at the achievement things and it's like you can get maybe 50 by playing through the story, but then you need to do, like, win. You know, it's like impossible achievements. Win with this character 150 times and then do its his fucking special move a quadruple billion times. You know what I mean? And then you get five. You know what I mean? Like, that stuff is annoying. I don't want to do that. You know what I mean? Like, if I'm going to spend 60 bucks on the game. Can you hear me now? Yeah, we hear you. No, I had technical difficulties. I did want to talk about KI. Actually, I was talking, but you couldn't hear me. Yeah, we were high and dry on the Nancy there. So, yeah, go ahead. No, I was here. Twerk your, way, twerk, twerk your way into this conversation, Nancy. What do you think? Whatever. Well, what I was saying about <laughs> KI, what I was saying about KI, I think it's an excellent game. And yes, I am ready for um, season three. Okay. And, like, uh, who are you hoping to see? Because I heard that we're getting Tusk. Yeah, that'd be cool. Yeah, like like we're gonna get Tusk, and uh, obviously we're gonna get what like the Battle Toad character or whatever. Um, I hope we're gonna get like a vampire or some shit like that too. And a few other characters. Now, now, are they? Do you know if they're going to release the whole season, or they're obviously going to do more than just the one character or two characters a month, right? I hope because they they have not released any characters in a while. So I'm hoping that they, uh, you know, since we've already seen the Battletoad character, I mean, how many do you figure they're going to release? I think they're going to give two characters or maybe three at launch, and oh, okay. every month they're going to add an additional character. But that's how I season one and season two is, man. They may do it. They may give us two and then do one by one. May, 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 okay, do well, a goal package. Yeah, you know what? I like the um, I, the season one. What did they give you? Six right away. And I'm, but you, by the way, some of these places should like really go back and re-review the game because the game is totally different than what it was at launch. Um, the menu is totally different. Everything's totally everything that you can do, like the shadow uh, stuff. You can like practice against um, your other players. There, like you know, if there's somebody on your friends list or whatever, it it basically does a drive avatar version of that player, and you can practice against them, and 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 it plays like your friends. You know, there's all this stuff. Um, that you can do now that you couldn't do at launch. So it's like, you know, Microsoft again. You know, just going back to the review scores real quick because I saw Tim Dog talking about this and some other people on Twitter. Do you guys think automatically from most reviewers, they go, hey, oh, it's an Xbox exclusive, minus one point. Like, before they even review the game, like, I just have this feeling that these that reviewers do this. Like, I don't think we'll see an Xbox exclusive score above 89 this generation, no matter how good it is. I just don't think we'll see that. What about, what do you guys think? I don't think we will because there's a bunch of 
bunch of haters, man. Like uh, they they've done too much. They've done too much, and they haven't got the recognition. Uh, I've said this before. Like a lot of these Sony fans, they like to pretend like this console generation started like 30 seconds ago. They were like, "What games you got coming up?" I'm like, "Well, what the fuck about the what about the games I'm playing?" I'm not gonna stop playing. Like Forza Six, you want to fucking talk about a career, something that you where you get your your money's worth. You know, that's there. You have Halo. That's another example. Gears of War, Sunset Overdrive, Rise, Son of Rome. It, it keeps going. And you have the Elite Controller. I mentioned that. And it's like, uh, well, I have a uh, fucking, but I just guess. So you guys uh, know, I'm not doing the console war anymore. I'm getting off that. So whatever's going on with people saying or the hate, I really don't give a shit anymore. Yo, thanks for interrupting me, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome. I appreciate that. <laughs> but no, man, I just want to... Um, I want them to get that recognition, man, because they've done so much in the last little bit. It's, it's at least, at least with this elite controller. After holding that in my hands, it just showed me like they really they give a fuck about the gamer. Yeah. So maybe we'll see it, but like I said, there's there's so much people are willing to ignore now, and there's so much that they want to fucking play their cards to, like a fucking Shamu three. You know, I've heard that shit. People are like, uh, the Xbox has no games. They're looking at my list and Shimo 3 on it. I'm like, what the fuck? That's why, I, that's why the phrase ass pirate exists, you fucking crazy delusional fuck. Like, you yeah. have no games. Like, what the now, fuck? What, now what I think they should do is what they did last generation when they came out with the 360 Elite console. Uh, remember how they had the 120 hard drive, the HDMI port, um, and they brought that over to the standardized consoles, and that was pretty much the standard. I really do think they should make that uh, SS uh, HD, the hybrid drive uh, that they have in the Elite console, and make the Elite controller a standard. Comes bundled in every console. I feel like that would definitely shut up a lot of the uh, naysayers and the negativity that they got coming out about the console, the hardware it, itself. I, it, yeah. I don't know if you guys agree with that, but that, I really think that's a good start. It should definitely be a standard for the next Xbox. I agree with you there. But this, well, this one, uh, the generation ain't gonna last too long. You know, we could see a next Xbox. Well, I could see a next a next Xbox being revealed 2018 sometime. So I think well, it'd be pretty pointless. <laughs> I think we all like. You know, I'm not like famous or anything, but I do happen to have a couple of I wouldn't say sources, but people in the industry that that talk to me, and I can't really mention any names or anything. And people will, some will believe me, some won't. But one that I've heard is that the, they've said that the Elite controller will not be standard next gen. Um, and the reason there's multiple reasons for this. One is the cost. Uh, you're gonna want to, you know, they're probably gonna have a very high end machine next generation, and that, and they want to keep the cost low. Uh, the second thing is the lead controller is not for everyone. You know, the paddles underneath take a little bit to get used to. The weight of it take. You know, I can understand like if you're a parent, and you're buying it for your kids. Do you really care that they have this elite controller? No. I mean, I think that the standard one will be fine for. A lot of people, but I do like the option of the hardcore one, in my opinion. I think it's great. Um, yeah, but unfortunately, I don't think that that's going to be something that's going to be standard. But speaking of what Microsoft does for uh, the consumers, again, it's amazing being an Xbox One owner because guess what? We get updates often, like on a monthly basis. A new update literally just launched on Xbox One. Um, here's some of the stuff that it offers. Uh, ability to see who's in a party chat together. Um, ability to rearrange your pins on the Xbox One. Before, you can only do that with the uh, Smart Glass app. Um, you can access your pins offline, thankfully. Uh, you, you, how, how annoying is that? Yeah, like when your that internet... Was annoying. That was yeah, annoying. Like, <laughs> Like, I mean, this is, it's good, right? Like, this is all stuff that, like, goes back to how the original Xbox One was going to be, some of this stuff, which which kind of sucks or whatever. But this is a cool thing, the next thing. It, you can hide your ready-to-install games because if you go all the way to your right, you see all these things that say ready-to-install. A lot of that stuff is, like, betas or demos or whatever that I had. You know what I mean? And it's like I don't want that stuff taking up that space. So now you're going to be able to hide all that stuff. I really like that thing. They're bringing back something that I absolutely love, which is the gamer score leaderboards. I used to love those things, like, you know, seeing how you're tracking against your friends or whatever. Damn you, Mikey Bearer. That motherfucker has so much gamer score. He always was number one on my list, man. It was crazy, but um, it was kind of cool to see yourself kind of, like, 
go against other people uh, and see where you stood up. You know what I mean? Because I always was in you know the top ten or so. You know. Yeah. And, it, uh, go ahead. No, I was gonna say I think it was a really cool feature, and that's something that I definitely wanted to see more of because it kind of it was kind of like a a fitness tracker to me in that style because it, it motivated me to want to try to see what games that I have here that I didn't get the achievements for to try to get some extra gamer score so that way I could be like, hey, you know, now I got more than so-and-so or I'm a few points away from being fifth on my leaderboard or wh whatever the case may be. But I found it to be really cool. It, it, it kind of makes you want to be a little more engaging in that style there so you can show up on your friend's leaderboard. Um... And then with being able to see uh, who's in a party chat, I think that's great. Like honestly, because I don't, there's some, there's some people I avoid. Like I can't, I'm trying to avoid certain people going into a party, and I don't want to have to go in there and then deal with that <laughs> shit. Yeah, and, uh, doing that drama and everything. Yeah, exactly. Now, now I can stalk Phil Spencer even better. You know, if he's in a party with somebody, I'd be like, oh, there's Phil. Let me go hop in this party and be like, what up, Phil? Oh, Phil, I had no idea you were yeah, here. I didn't, I didn't uh, even know you were in here. What, what are you a doing? coincidence, man. Hey, man, what's um, up, man? How's that, how's that Xbox, original Xbox backwards compatibility going there, bud? You know what I mean? Like, yeah, I could just hop in there, but no. I think that that's well past needed. Yo, but this is a perfect example of Microsoft doing what they do best. That's adding... Feature after feature after, after feature, feature yes. <laughs> hit, hit after hit after hit. Yeah. And my favorite one that I heard, I don't know, like I haven't really tried it myself, is the whole, you know, the party chat thing that you could hear on Twitch. Okay, yes, this is something that they didn't even announce, right? This dude who follows me, um, holy crap, I can't even remember his Twitter handle. Um, oh, man. I, dude, sorry if I can't remember your Twitter handle, but he's like, holy crap, and he tweets it to me, and he's like, um, you know, look, you can, you know, when you Twitch stream now, you can get your party involved in there, and I thought that was really awesome because um, I have friends that Twitch stream and stuff. My buddy Grave, uh, Gravedigger, he, he Twitch streams all the time. He's a funny dude, and it's funny because when we Twitch stream, we're all so funny over Xbox Live, but when you watch his stream, it, it's like he, he looks crazy because he's talking to himself and laughing at, you know what I mean, at nothing because nobody else can hear what's going on. It was so frustrating. You know now, what I mean? Like, you can hear the whole party and yeah. maybe sometimes even do a podcast. Maybe you could do BGST on Twitch. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, some people mean. were already asking that. They were like, hey, can you guys do that on Twitch or whatever? And I think that's cool. So that is something that wasn't even announced, but Microsoft busted ass and got it in there. Also, the Avatar store is back, so you can like... Um, you know, oh, yeah. do all your avatar stuff and things like that. I'm really excited and, about that shit, man. Like, yeah. I've been, I've been, I've been dying to see more integration. Like, I remember when the uh, Xbox One was like first revealed. There's a bunch of articles coming out how they're gonna integrate avatars. It's gonna be more of a social aspect as well. And then I got the console, and and I had to like dig through layers and layers just to see my avatar. So, and yes, I'm one of those idiots that refuse to do like microtransactions and stuff like that, but I'll buy clothes for my avatar. <laughs> so, yeah. I, I might be a hypocrite there, but nonetheless, I really enjoy it, man. I, I'm glad that that's coming back and being well, revamped. Well, it's not really a game. I think that that's like, you know, I think that like I they bought some just, stuff on there too. They should give it know? some re uh, relevance, you know what I'm saying? And I'm yeah. glad to uh, integrate it in some form, and Hopefully we I, see it more often on the dashboard, like the 360. Yeah, yeah. And, and you know what? Like, here's the thing, right? Like, uh, here we are, like almost 40 minutes into this podcast, and we've talked nothing but Xbox. But people will will still think that, hey, because there's a couple Sony things I wanted to talk about. Oh man, they must, you know, all they do is talk about Sony or whatever. Look, we've been talking up all this great Xbox stuff. So if you think that's all we do is talk PlayStation or whatever, then just Go back and take a look at the first 40 minutes of this. It's all positive Xbox stuff, although not all of it is positive because I want to say that I'm a little bit disappointed that here we are in January, and I kind of stuck up for Microsoft in December um, with their backwards compatibility list. I said, you know, I can understand why it was a less than stellar list when they came out with that in December. Um, they were busy, you know, that they, but they need to have a more structured thing. If it's the 20th or whatever, that's fine. It just needs to be the same time each month. You know, I'm fine with that. If it's going to be the 25th every month, fine, because it's still the same amount of time in between releases. You know what I mean? Just make sure it's a steady release date, a, a more common release date. You know what I mean? Like, uh, you know, the, the 25th or the 23rd of every, every month. You know what I mean? Like, that's fine with me. But the fact that we don't hear anything and then, you know what I mean, it's just, I don't know, That's that does kind of bug me a little yeah, bit. That shit does bother me. We're approaching yeah. the final week of January and we ain't got shit, no yeah. sign of anything. 
And I don't know what to say, man. I give up. I asked Mike this morning. I was like, hey, Mike, uh, any news on that? <laughs> no no response. Um, they, uh, they, they're, doing, they're doing a real good job with all the games, but, yeah, consistency is good, but, hey, you could have a fucking PlayStation. You know, imagine if your whole experience was just fucked up, you know. And yeah. that's, that's why I, I say stuff. Uh, crap, you just mentioned it. You know, people like to say, well, we talk about PlayStation. Fuck yeah, like, who the fuck is, who, who's gonna, if we don't? Like, yeah. these motherfuckers get away with everything. Hey, I, I'm with you, Blackie. Look, I, I, I'm 100% with you. I'm, I'm in that because people always go, hey, well, if you love Xbox so much, why not just talk up that and stop shitting on PlayStation? I'm like, hey, I can do both. I'm talented. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Hey, everybody, <laughs> a, a quick reminder, this is Crap Gamers Channel. He can do whatever the hell he wants. Yeah, look, exactly. It's no rules reviews. If I want to play a game for five fucking minutes and review it, bitch, it says no rules reviews right in the fucking name. Right, every review I so, can do. So you can't try to. Lie. They don't have to yeah. like what you do. Exactly, you do? they don't, don't have to do it. Exactly, exactly. You know and what so I the fucking hate? I hate keeping up with the Kardashians, so I don't watch that shit. So if you exactly. don't watch the channel, don't fucking watch. You don't want to watch something? Don't watch it. But the funny thing to me is this, right? I will cover stuff like this whole trademark thing that Sony tried to do. You go on M4G and people are like, oh, well, people are overreacting to this. Uh, it's nothing different than, than Microsoft's jump in trademark or anything like this. And I'm like, bitch, okay, the only difference is there's not millions of people would jump in with a fucking YouTube thing. You know what I mean? Like, oh, Sony would own that shit. They would get money from that. You know, people don't understand it. They let Sony off the hook. Sony's getting cocky. You guys, I'm sure you guys have all seen Chappelle show where they did the Rick James thing. And uh, Charlie Murphy would say, you know, Rick James Charlie would get Murphy. All, Yeah, he'd get all cocky and shit, right? And then he'd have to get checked. Sony's getting cocky. Bitch, you got to check him. You know what I mean? You got to be like, hey, Sony, what did the five fingers say to the face? Slap! Because they get really cocky, and that's how their culture is, and that's how they are as a fucking company. They start getting too cocky with that lead, and they think their shit don't stink. It's up to gamers to check them, and it's Yo, up to the YouTube community to check them. So we know. have to do that. Sony, oh. Sony, they some habitual line steppers. Yeah, they, exactly, exactly, <laughs> exactly, Blackie, gonna, exactly. There's one, th one question I want to ask everybody on the panel. Now, going back to that Xbox event that's going to be in February, do you think Microsoft, between now and then, you know, there's something in the pipeline. They're making a big heavyweight move. Do you think the acquisition is going to be made and they're going to acquire AMD before we announce it? Before we get into all that, I just wanted to say thanks for having me on again, Crap Gamer. I got to ride out into town. It was nice talking to you again, Lebowski. It was nice seeing you, Iron Wolf. It was nice hearing from you, uh, Nancy. Everybody, thanks for having me again. You have a good all night, right, guys. Man. I'll all right, take it easy, later. man. Make sure you guys sub to Too Much Food, man. That's O. That's T with the with the uh, number O O. Yeah, Too easy. Much Food, man. Appreciate you you stopping by. Rack them up, bro. Um, uh, you know yeah, what were you saying, Wolf? Uh, going back to that question, do you think uh, they could announce a heavyweight move like acquiring AMD? Well, is that really an Xbox move? Do you think, or is that more of a Microsoft move? It'll be a Microsoft move. It'll be a Nadella move, but. It will be beneficial um, to their hardware business when you think about it. Yeah, you know, I mean, they could. I don't know. What was funny to me was I booted up Plants for Zombies Garden Warfare 2, um, the beta, right? And then the thing that I noticed right away was Havoc Engine, right? And so I'm thinking Microsoft, ching, ching. You know what I mean? Like they're 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 racking up the, the coins for all that stuff. You know they what I mean? They could like, have, like, third parties there too, you know? You never know. EA could, like, jump in there. Maybe even show Mass Effect gameplay. Who knows, man? Hey, did you see, like, the France, what was it? The French uh, something or other showed the Mass Effect um, uh, trailer, right? And then they had the Xbox logo jump in at the end. So maybe Microsoft does have marketing rights to that game, which would be, like, a sigh of relief for me because that's one of my favorite franchises, and I would prefer Microsoft to have that. Um, it's always been known as a Microsoft franchise, right? I mean, let's, let, who are we kidding, right? It's always been I mean, associated with Xbox. Yeah. And it's I mean, proven too. This year could be a little bit different on the third-party thing because I actually think Microsoft has some of the better third-party. I mean, obviously, Sony's going to still have Destiny and Call of Duty, but Call of Duty is still going to sell extremely well on Xbox. So is Destiny. The reason why is because these, these shooters and stuff are always going to sell really well with the better... <sighs> Uh, Xbox Live and that better controller and the better community in general. So this is the thing, crap. Like Microsoft have some of the best 
third party marketing deals out there. And shout out to my boy Jay Long. He said it best. Take advantage of it. Like you got the girl in bed with her legs wide open. Why don't you go third <laughs> base? Why don't yeah. you go third base, man? Make a custom console for it. Have these commercials out there. I just don't get it. Microsoft, man, you get you gotta get your marketing game right, yo. What is yeah. what is what is home base? Cream pie? <laughs> <laughs> I uh, I'm not really going there. Um, yeah, so 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 it's interesting that that would make my day to hear that Microsoft actually has the marketing rights with that. But what's interesting is that the vision is getting a ton of press lately, right? And um, and Sony's only countering that with their their bundle is going to be um, the hell is that damn um, damn? There's that Primal game. What the hell is that? Uh, you guys know what I'm talking about, right? They put it, those Far Cry Primal. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Like that is a good is okay franchise, but I don't think that there's going to be as much buzz around another Far Cry as the Division. You know what I mean? I think that um, yeah. So so I think that that's going to be a really big win for Microsoft because you have the brand new de- you have the brand new uh, Division, which is going to be looking every bit as much. To Destiny, you know what I mean? Like, look, at, look what D- Destiny was, right? Love it or hate it. I know Wolf, you're on it a lot. Uh, you play it a lot. Um, it's addicting, I guess, for some people, right? Yeah, it really is addicting. And um, I, I, like I said, comparing it to the Division is apples and oranges. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, with the Division, I don't know, like, if you're gonna level up your armor or anything like that. But I did see some gameplay, and I see, like, some guy shooting a dude, like, so many times, and he didn't die, so it could be a case where you have to level up your weapons. I don't know, man. Well, well, yeah, I saw that. It's not a realistic type thing, right? It's like, I don't know if you guys ever played Defiance on 360, um, was, like, an MMO um, game. Really good. I liked it. It was kind of like that, like, with the almost, like, Borderlands-ish, like, everybody had that kind of bar, and it took a lot of bullets to take things down. Um, that's what I guess what they're kind of going for. Maybe they'll they'll do it a little bit easier, but I don't think it's going to be a more, more realistic shooter. I think it's still going to be, like, even yeah. though it's set in a realistic place. Now, the thing that bothers me a little bit is, apparently, there's going to be a lot of DLC and expansions for this. Like, you only get one area or whatever, which is kind of a which is kind of a letdown, uh, in my opinion. But the game overall, it looks really good. Um, I think that we've been seeing this game for the past few years or whatever. Um, I'm excited for it. I think it's going to do just, well. I just don't know if it's going to do as well as Destiny. I highly much doubt it. I know it's going to be a good game. Like, I'm not doubting that what, you know, one bit. But it probably it, it will warrant a sequel. We'll probably get a Division 2. But in terms of like how well it's going to do, in terms of reviews, um, it's going to be pretty average. We've seen the downgrade, you know what I mean? It's, it ain't nothing like what we saw initially like two years yeah. ago. Well, Ubisoft so. hopefully has learned their lesson. Apparently they have. Um, you know, look, showing off stuff on like a $30,000 rig um and then kind of fooling people, trying to fool people into thinking that's what your final product is going to look like obviously hasn't worked out too well for them. Uh look, I mean Watch Dogs. Look, your games are good, Ubisoft, right? Like look, at Assassin's Creed Syndicate, I'm loving that game, right? That's probably a sleeper hit of last year that a lot of people I don't I know didn't want to buy because Unity had a lot of problems at launch. Syndicate complete opposite. There's I haven't had any problems with it, no frame rate issues. It looks gorgeous. Um the London setting is fantastic. The, the switch characters between the two main characters, the brother and sister, fucking phenomenal. I, this game is really, really good. Nobody was talking about it. Nobody has, that I know has it. Um, the you know, only Ubisoft games I'm personally looking forward to is Ghost Recon Wildlands, and hopefully we get a Splinter Cell game. Other than that, most Ubisoft games, they're always broken. That's the, that's the problem. Well, um, do, do you guys think that... Uh, you know, I would love to see the the last Splinter Cell because put on backwards compatibility. The reason being is I have that game on 360, right? And it looks really good. Like, but I didn't have time to really play through much of it. Uh, maybe the first bit of it, uh, just because the Xbox One came out at the same time. 
You yeah. know what I mean? So it's maybe like I would, Microsoft could lock down the new Splinter Cell game. They did have they did have Conviction locked down, which was really good. That was my favorite yeah. Splinter Cell. I know some people. I can't tell if people shit on that game because it was Xbox exclusive or if because they just didn't like it because it was a little bit different than the other ones. Like to me, Splinter Cell Conviction was phenomenal. It looked great. It played great. I like the story. Yeah, I'd like to see a new Splinter Cell. Yeah. Exactly. I mean, I think that uh, you know it would be it, it makes sense to do that, right? Um, and obviously, like there, this generation it has some disappointments too. Like this whole um, Hitman thing. Like I like the last Hitman game, but what about this new episodic Hitman game? I mean, to me, that seems like they're just trying to get money for nothing. Like, okay, well, we're going to release it episodically. It's supposed to be a AAA franchise. But this is know? the thing: when they release it episodic. Uh, when they release it like that, they always have like a little cliffhanger at the end, so it makes you want to buy the next one. That's the yeah. problem. Yeah, but the thing is, it's like these AAA games should be should be ready. Like I would never buy a Halo game. They're like, okay, here's the first chapter of Halo Six. You know, you know, five ninety nine or whatever. You know what I mean? Like that's gonna be disappointing to me. Like I don't but want episodic that. Episodic games make money though. That's the thing. And like, I don't. Yeah, and I don't mind that sometimes. Life but, is Strange has made money and it's won many awards. Yeah, like, did you like that game, though? I mean, like, for me, I played the first episode, and I thought it was an okay story, but it was like I put, like, four or five hours in this thing, and I, again, going back to achievements, I don't know. I was like, I, I for some reason, I thought it would be, like, the Telltale games where you just get a bunch of achievements by playing through it, but it was like, apparently, you had to do certain shit, which I didn't look up ahead of time, so it was like, I ended up with, like, 40, 40 gamer score or something for it, or 50 or Something that was pretty lame. Uh, I think the first episode is free, actually. So, you know, anyone who ain't tried it, you could go ahead to the store and download yeah. it. Well, you know, a lot of people liked it. I mean, I just I just don't know. Like, I see a lot of people trying to bite off that whole uh, Telltale Games type thing. And for me, that's just, uh, they're the ones that do it best. Like, that Tales from the Borderlands, for me, is just like the ultimate kind of... Um, you know, game, one of those games, in my opinion. Like, that's just phenomenal, and I absolutely loved it. Um, just moving on real quick uh, as well, a little bit more Xbox stuff. Now, no sites, hardly any, reported that or congratulated that Ark Survival Evolved hit 1 million downloads on Xbox One and that the uh, community is actually farther ahead and has more active players in the PC community, right? Nobody really came out and said any of this stuff, right? Had this been a Sony game, obviously they would have been all over it saying, hey, congratulations to Sony for the players, blah, 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 right? But Eurogamer, sure as shit, came out and did an analysis on this game, right? And was like, oh, it's so unacceptable. It's sub-720p. Uh, it has frame rate drops, all this stuff. You know, it's terrible. You know, what, what are people thinking? Why is there a million people playing this game? Um, and here's the interesting thing to me. Uh, they didn't do the PC analysis, which apparently the PC version has all these same problems, even on really beefy rigs, um, just because it's a resource-heavy game, right? Secondly, they seem to only do this to make Xbox look bad. Like, remember them doing the backwards compatibility games, like, early on in the preview ones or whatever? Uh, anytime they get a chance to shit on Xbox, they, they seem to do it. You know, it's like, okay, look, this isn't even a game in beta. This is a preview game, right? Why are they testing this shit? And then at the end of the day, I want to say, look, here's the thing, right? This is the, the, the reason that this game is successful is the anti-Euro gamer, the anti-Sony fan, right? Because gamers like this game because it's, wait for it, fun. Oh, shit, imagine that, right? A game that's fun, people play and have downloaded over a million times. doesn't yeah. matter if it's the best-looking game or the game that performs the best. You know, I'll admit it's not the best looking game, but it's fun. You know what I mean? People like it. You know, it's teamwork, it's online, it's doing all this really cool stuff. It's like it's fun. Look at Minecraft, right? That game people love it. It's little eight bit shit. You know what I'm saying? Why do people keep playing it? Because it's imaginative and fun. You build stuff. Arc Survival Evolved is much the same way. It's just fun. You know, it's hard yeah, it's, it's one of those it's, games it's that's Minecraft. hard to explain. It's like Minecraft for adults. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Like, look, that's Tim a, Dog. Awesome. Yeah. Tim Dog plays it all the time. You know what I mean? Like everybody I know plays this game. I have it. I haven't been able to sink as much time into it as maybe uh, some of these other people. But I think that it's a fun game. And for Eurogamer to kind of, you know, I thought they were maybe turning over a new leaf with that article that they did. But then here they are, you know, just being. 
basically what they are what they always do, which is just basically kind of talk shit and uh, take take the time to trash anything Microsoft. And then of course you have like the Neo gaps and things like that kind of jumping on board. Um, yeah, but that's that, how you know, Eurogamer has always been. They just wait for crumbs underneath the table and yeah. they'll grab what they can to back yeah. their Xbox. And uh, it's a shame. Exactly. Um, okay, moving on real quick. Uh, the Nintendo NX leak. I don't know if you guys... We usually don't talk much Nintendo, but apparently, I'm not sure if this is a leak or not, apparently this was just um, some surveys by the company that's running these surveys for Nintendo to try to gauge what consumers want. Um, and then Nintendo NX could be doing 4K video streaming, um, 900p native games with 60 frames per second. So um, I guess you're looking at something that's maybe on par with Xbox One and PS4, um, obviously. You know what I mean? If you look at what, what's going on, that seems to be on par with that. I hear the Xbox One um, will be could be able to stream 4K like stuff with, with a system update, so that's not like unheard of for it to do that either. Uh, I mean, what are your guys' thoughts on this uh, new Nintendo system? I mean, what do, you, <laughs> do they even have a chance with something like this? Do they need something much more powerful? What are your thoughts? All right, first I of all, new one. What, what's that? I, said, I think I made my new one. <clears throat> a new Nintendo system. Yeah. What, what would they have? What would they have to have for you to want to buy it? Like an achievement system, a party chat system. Um, what? Really? No, I mean, as long as they keep good games on it and the graphics are good and good gameplay, I mean. I do a lot of other stuff on, on the Xbox One. I mean, if they add it, more power to them. It just adds more to the features. I mean, it okay. would be nice, but, you know, it's it's not necessary, you know, on every console you have. I, I don't know. Well, first of all, Nintendo, they need to think ahead instead of thinking backwards. You know what I'm saying? Because they're very, as we all know here on this panel, they're very stubborn. They don't really listen to the fans, and they don't know what's good for business. That's the only problem. They need to get the basic shit right. You know, they do need something that's on par, if not more powerful, than the PS4 and Xbox One. You know, they need party chats. They need achievements. They need a profile, an online profile. They need gamer tags. They need all this kind of... I don't understand this friend code business, and they, they shouldn't really make anything like a tablet mandatory on every fucking system. Do you know what I'm saying? I think the Wii U could have done well... If it came without the tablet and just have a pro controller there, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, you know, less it, they'd need to get the pricing right with this next console. I think yeah, pricing it, 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 would play the most important part in this. Well, they got to have a good a good launch lineup, a good yeah, online, a, a good online system. Uh, for me to be interested at all, they need an achievement system. Like as gay as uh, the the PlayStation trophies are, you know, that's still better than nothing. So you know, I'll take I'll take that. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like they need to have something um, that that's that's ab on those lines. You know what I mean? Like you, you this is two thousand sixteen. Yeah, they need they need an online infrastructure. You know what yeah. I'm saying? They really need it's, it's, it's two thousand sixteen. Let's get with the goddamn party, Nintendo. You know what I mean? Like uh, you guys have been you've been given a free pass for years. You struck gold with the Wii, but that fad shit. You know. They need As, to stop being everybody's parent. That's the thing. Yeah. Hey, Next Gen says that all the time, you know. But, uh, you know, th they have the IPs enough to be different, but at least give you, you know, like I would buy some third-party stuff on there, maybe not strictly, like, but I still would maybe buy, you know, because sometimes I'll double dip on games. I used to do that last gen. Like, I, I bought all the Batman Arkham games on the 360 and PS3. Um, I bought the Dragon Age games on 360 and PS because I liked them so much, but once you did so much on uh, on the 360 and you couldn't get any more achievements, it was like I wanted to play through it again. So I would play through it on PS3 and get the trophy. You know what I mean? Like so, so I would do that. Um, one you thing know, Nintendo, the, one thing Nintendo needs to do is get some more, more hardcore games. Yeah, I agree with you there too. But yeah. the thing is, I find it kind of pointless. Thank you. If the Wii U can do 1080p games, and the Wii. And the next Wii or the NX or whatever you want to call it, they're doing 900p games. Isn't that taking a step back? Well, if you look at, well, I mean, they could like depends on what you're gonna do. Can it do like the Wii U can't do any of the current gen stuff that's on Xbox, like the multiplayer set, like Witcher or anything. Yeah, yeah. If yes. the if the Wii U could do Witcher 3, 900p, 60 frames per second, I think that's uh, that would be great. 
You so know basically, I mean? you want you want the next the NX or whatever. You want it to run Unreal Engine Four, the new Crytek engine. It needs to, yeah. It definitely needs to. Look at the stuff that's that's uh, look. Sea of Thieves um, is is running Unreal Engine Four. Uh, you know, Fable Legends, Unreal Engine Four, DirectX Twelve. These are you know standards. Uh, you know, so you would hope that they would have what everybody else is using. I think that they need to have what everybody else is using just, just because um, that's what you use to be competitive. You need to, and we're already, like, we'll be two and a half, three years into the generation um, where, you know, and, and they're just joining in to what the Xbox One and PS4 have. So I think that, that you got to give people a reason to buy your console, and so I think that they better come ready to play. You know oh, what's what I mean? this functionality that you're talking about with the PS4 or something like that? You were well, I think that was too much food. Somebody was saying that maybe it would work with, like, PC and, uh, you know, like, phones and, like, be interactive or whatever. I don't know. So, um, yeah, I, I have no idea, you know. Who knows? But Nintendo, the one thing, if in order to succeed... They cannot have another gimmick because if they did, yeah. that's it. It's DOA. Yeah, I, I agree. You know, stop stop being gimmicky. You don't need, uh, you know, motion controls or any, you know, VR. All that stuff fails eventually. You know, 3D. Uh, you know, thank the 3DS probably could have done much better if they didn't have the 3D at all. You know, just come out with the. DS2 or whatever, you know what I'm saying, as far as I'm concerned, you know, most of it, I don't use the 3D on that thing, you know, I don't know anybody that does, so I, I think don't. that, yeah, it's, it's kind of ridiculous. Uh, just switch it over to, I got a couple more Sony topics and then we'll hit the road. Uh, Mark Cerny joined Twitter, um, and then he started posting, I don't know if you guys seen, he was posting pictures with him and Kojima, um, I, of course, trolled him a little bit. I was like, hey, there's a couple of washed-up has-beens right there. You know what I mean? And, you know, just like joking oh, was around. It, was, it, was, it, was it in a gay bar this time? Um, I don't know what they were doing, man. People were all, like, you know, going crazy, you know, nutting themselves over this shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, oh, my God, they're buddies and all this stuff. You know what I'm saying? I was like, oh, my God, get a room. No. First of all, Mark Cerny looks like he's been hanging out with uh, Charlie Sheen partying with him a little bit too much. You know what I'm saying? Like, that dude looks terrible. Like, I don't well, know they're how... Both, well. They're both pretty washed up. You know what I'm saying? There's nothing to be excited for. Whatever Kojima's going to make, you're not going to see it into the PS5. So, like, yeah. let's move on. Let's keep it moving. Yeah, I, I agree. I think that it's interesting. But I just thought it was interesting that yeah. how Mark Cerny gets so much hype when he joins Twitter, but then you have, like other people that have joined Twitter much better than him, in my opinion, people that are still relevant. Um, I mean, Mark Cerny <laughs> is the guy who created Knack, for God's sakes, right? Uh, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And people are just, like, fawning over themselves. Can over I just guys. say so, something real quick? Guys, yeah. I got to run out, man. I'll see y'all later. I got some important stuff going on. All right, no Blaggy. Later, bro. Hey, keep it Xbox. Later, right, man. Bro. Later, bro. See ya. One thing I wanted to say about Knack uh, quickly that new game that's on Games of Gold Zeros, that is a better game than Knack, and that's a fucking fact. Hey, I'll say this, right? I don't usually play the games that come out on Games for Gold. I downloaded that and played it. I like it. It could be just the fact that it's not a fucking puzzle platformer for a change, right? Like, I am so sick of puzzle platformers being the games that they give away. I'm so happy that... Um, it's a what brawler. They, yeah, I'm so happy that... And it looks good, and it plays good, and it's fun. Um, I, I'm, I'm a couple boards into it, so hopefully it continues to be fun and not like maybe it's something that I can pick up and play like 10 or 15 minutes here or there. Um, you know what I mean? But yeah, you know that's you know what you know what's interesting to me because I get a lot of flack for hating indies or whatever, and for the most part I do. Um, but that game reminds me of something that would be on Summer of Arcade on 360, right? For like 7.99 or nine, whatever. You know what I mean? Like, and I'm okay with that. You know what I'm saying? But it's the fact that we get these indies shoved down our throats ad nauseum for twenty bucks, thirty bucks, forty bucks. Look at this game, The Witness, right? This Jonathan Blow game. Now this guy hates Microsoft, swears that Microsoft like ruined him. Um, him and me got we got an argument when the Xbox One was revealed, and he was trying to tell me that you know, Mike, no way did Xbox Live have three hundred thousand servers. It was just virtual server. Like he didn't understand. He didn't believe in cloud computing or anything. Uh, so and it actually made news sites that me and him were going back and forth about this, right? Um, so so I have no love for this guy, right? And so this is a game that Sony spent a lot of time marketing, uh, pushing as one of their indies or whatever. Guess what? This game is forty fucking dollars. An indie game 
is forty dollars, and it's digital only, right? You know, you know what the killer is, crap. I've never heard of, I've never heard of this game until Next Gen mentioned it. I didn't even know of this game, so it shows how relevant the game is. Yeah, exactly. Like, who's gonna buy this game? Sony spent all that time letting this asshole go up on stage and uh, you know and and talk it up and all this shit, and and for what? You know, for this game is just basically going to flop because Sony's not talking about it. They're not going to hype it up anymore. It's just going to release and, and flop terribly, and that's going to be the end but of it's it. The, it's going to be the same thing with a lot of these games. Like, you know, Sony will like to pull, pull it like it's some sort of exclusive. Like Nino Kuni, you saw it on the sides. It said console debut. You saw it with Paragon or whatever, that game from Epic Games. Yeah. And uh, I could guarantee you one thing, Nier Automata from Platinum Games, that's going to definitely come to the Xbox, because you don't see no PlayStation brand all over that play, all over that game saying exclusive or anything like that. You just don't see it. Well, Platinum Games, they're doing a lot lately, aren't they? I mean, if you look at uh, they're doing a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles game, which is which looks really good in my opinion. Um, I saw some screenshots. They did a Transformers game that's really fun. Um, yeah. I've been playing through that. Um, they're doing it's, scale it's, bound. It's the team that made Transformers, I believe that's the same team that's making the Ninja Turtles game. Yeah, uh, yeah they're also working on Nier and Scalebound, but the, the main team, like Platinum Games, their best of the best, they're working on Scalebound. Yeah, and, and that makes sense to me. I'm, I'm excited for uh, maybe, hope, you know, even though Scalebound got delayed, I'm sure we'll see more about it and hear more about it this year. So I'm I'm really excited about that, and uh, hopefully um, it continues to look as impressive as it does. Um, also, real quick, they they come out and said that Uncharted 4, the dialogue, it's going to have like branching dialogue, right? Um, this is a new thing for the Uncharted series, but Naughty Dog has come out and said that there's no absolutely no effect on the outcome of the games, which basically renders this completely pointless. Um, it's just something that you're going to kind of show. So people hated on Mass Effect 3 in particular um, because the dialogue, you know, at the end of the day, it didn't really matter which options you pick because everything came out the same. Uh, will, will this game take a hit from reviewers and things like that because the dialogue actually makes no difference what you pick. The game's going to end the same way. Um, what, what is your guys' thoughts on this? Just a waste of time to do it? Um, were they just trying to, um, you know, get too cute with it or impress people? What, what's the deal? I guess they wanted to, you know, try go around saying that they wanted to try something different. But all in all, in all reality, it's going to be the same game, same ending, same everything. It's uncharted at the end of the day. It's running on a last gen engine. Me not say more. Like the multiplayer, I'm. I know this ain't nothing to do with multiplayer. We're talking story here, but. It's a washed up franchise, and I'll be glad once it's gone because Naughty Dog, they need to work on something new. You know what I'm saying? They need to well, work on. Yeah, it I right. wasn't big on Inch Uncharted either. Well, here, here's the thing: see, they have to do all those changes. Was gonna outcome still gonna be the same? You know, like you just said, they need to, Naughty Dog needs to work on some better games, some more hardcore games. Let's let's get to it. Yeah, they need to start with the casual games now. They need to work on something good. Well, here's the thing. I actually like the Uncharted games. Well, obviously, like I like the second one a lot. The first and the third one, eh, um, were okay. Like I thought that, especially the the third one, just basically got by on the merits of the second one, in my opinion. Like the scores that it got because it was nowhere near as good. Um, it was a piece of shit. Yeah, it, was, it was not. It wasn't great. Uh, there was a lot of bugs and issues and frame rate problems, and um, just the story was wasn't as good or as strong. I just you know, it wasn't as long a game. The the, the multiplayer took a step back. Um, and so, what's interesting to me is that uh, they're saying that this is the end of the Nathan Drake story or whatever. But hey, they might do a prequel or have a different character or whatever. But people that actually think you actually believe that this is going to be the end of Uncharted, you're crazy. They're still still do them. Even if Naughty Dog doesn't do them, you'll have a different studio do it, right? Because this is a one of the few PlayStation properties that sells units, right? If you look at it, uh, they, they sell units. Look at what Sony does. People don't buy their exclusives. Um, they they don't. It's one of the few that they do buy is that it's and one, God of one, War. Yeah, it's one of the rare few that does sell. Uh, I do agree with you. 
Yeah. So 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 why would so you know and Sony's in charge of that situation. See, so. This is the thing. Like, I'm kind of glad that you know Sony they kind of stepped away from Killzone and they're making a new IP. They're making Horizon. Hopefully yeah. we don't see a Killzone for maybe another ten years because <laughs> that is dog shit. Yeah. But, yeah. Same thing with Uncharted. Hopefully they step away from that after four and they work on something new. Well, and you, they'll you know, focus Sony... on The Last of Us too. You know, focus on that. They had Sony Bend, I believe, or one of their other San Diego studios or something do um, uh, an Uncharted game on the Vita, which was actually done pretty well. So I could see them outsourcing that. It doesn't exactly take a stellar, um, you know, you could maybe have a couple of people from Naughty Dog oversee it, but it, I don't think it takes a stellar group of people to slap together that. And, and since, you know, and games always have a peak, Uncharted peaked at two. Um, there's really nowhere to go but down, you know what I'm saying? So obviously, I think probably their whole, their thinking is, and maybe rightly so, is you do a few, you know, and then you go on to something else, right? Yeah. And I admire Naughty Dog for that because look, they started off with Crash Bandicoot. They did a couple really good ones. Uh, then they got out of that. You know what I mean? Like they moved on. And then Jack and Dexter, that those were really good, and then they got out of that. The Uncharted ones. Uh, the second one was pretty good. They get out of that. I'm not a big Last of Us fan. I know some people really like those that series, but I, you know, I just couldn't get behind it. Um, you know, uh, I do think that they're a talented studio, um, a somewhat cocky or whatever. But I think that they aren't as as good as people try to make out as well. You know what I mean? Like people act like they're gods or something, and they're not. They're just, you know, they, they made. You know, they yeah. make Naughty Dog, they just need to make a game that doesn't really hold your hand for you like that. That's all they need to do. And I can tell you this, but yeah. I'll be all, I'll be all for yeah, it. I, <laughs> I agree with that. But one thing they do do, as you can, as you just said, is that they 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 make their money in one spot and then they move somewhere else. Yeah, because it gets stagnated is what is what happens. It's like you can only. <laughs> That's what I was just saying. It, it, yeah. They move on. They they're not going to stay with something and just repeat the same shit over and over again. Yeah. So 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 I mean, in, in that aspect, it's good. You know, maybe they'll move on to something else. Maybe they have something else other planned. But I don't think that that'll be the end of Uncharted with this one. I, I just that makes too. Will it be as good? Probably not. But again, it's probably yeah, I mean, not going to. This one with Naughty Dog, it probably isn't going to be as good as say the peak at two. You know, and you could say the same thing about any other game. I mean, uh, no matter who it is, you know, you might say, hey, well, Halo 5 wasn't as good as Halo 3 or whatever, and maybe that's right in your opinion. You know what I'm saying? Um, but that's no comparison compared to what, what what they did to Uncharted. Yeah, exactly. So, so no I mean, and, yeah, and you, you can't even use those two. That's that's like comp comparing, you know, watermelons with grapes now. Come on. Yeah. Um, and just, just going on that, the whole exclusive argument, right? Um, you know, we get that a lot, right? People... Oh, you kind of cut, you cut off their crap. Yo, crap. Yo, crap. Where you at, man? Well, last thing I heard was the whole exclusive argument thing. I think is, I think is his mic. I don't know. That was that happened before. He he was he his mic was going in and out. I don't know. Well, all I can say is. This podcast was brought to you by Quantum Break, a future masterpiece. You're a definite 10 out of 10. You're retarded. <laughs> You're retarded. Oh, crap. Are you there? Can you guys hear me? Now yeah, we can. I hear you now. I hear you now. Yeah. Oh, now, now you guys can hear me? Yeah, yeah. sorry, I accidentally like uh, unplugged. No, you, you were talking. So that was my bad. But anyway, I was saying. No, you didn't unplug your you, mic. You just didn't want yeah, to talk to us no more. We know how rude you can get. <laughs> oh yeah, you know me. Uh, I'm, I'm incredibly rude. Uh, but but hold on, like we get these lists right of of PS4 games and all these exclusives they get. The top 20 downloaded PS4 games were released. Um, the the most downloaded ones. And I have to tell you guys, um, there's a lot of lying ass Sony fans out there uh, with these lists, right? Because 18 of these games on this 20 you can get on Xbox. Um, one, you know what I mean. So here's yeah. the list, right? Number one, Black Ops Three, um, which I have that on Xbox. Uh, Grand Theft Auto Five is number two. I have that on Xbox. Minecraft is number three. I have that on Xbox. Which, by the way, thank you Sony fans for buying Minecraft and help supporting Xbox exclusive because that money goes right to Microsoft. Um, number four is Battlefront. I have that on Xbox. Number five, Fallout Four. 
Um, I don't have that on Xbox, but obviously it's on Xbox. Uh, number six, Destiny. I have that on Xbox. Number seven, Witcher 3. I have that on Xbox. Uh, number eight is Mortal Kombat X, um, obviously on Xbox. Uh, the next one would be Elder Scrolls Online. Again, that's on Xbox. Here's the exclusive, Bloodborne, at number 10. Um, what do you guys think about that? I mean, that's the only exclusive, really, in this top 20. For uh, This is all of 2015, right? All of 2015. Bloodborne is the only one, and it's only number 10. Um, and then number 11, Dying Light, which is on Xbox. 12, FIFA 16, 13, Battlefield Hardline. The next up is Madden 15. And then Soccer Cars, which I guess is an exclusive, but that's coming to Xbox as well. Um, you know, And that's kind of sad to me that one of the bigger games. And also, you could also say that why it was downloaded so much was because it was free for a period last year on, on PS4. Yeah. So, I mean, that could be part of the reason why that's in there. Um 16, Battlefield 4, 17, Batman Arkham Knight. It's all marketing. 18, Dragon Ball something, Xenoverse. Xenoverse. Yeah, that's, yeah. On Xbox. Um, that's on Xbox. 19, Resident Evil. 20, Metal Gear Solid 5. So, out of this out of this group of 20 games, 18 of them are on Xbox One. These are the most downloaded games on PlayStation 4. 18 of them are on Xbox right now. Soccer Cars is going to be on Xbox um, so basically one exclusive. Nobody one wants exclusive. soccer. It, it just go it just goes to show that, you know, the Sony fans they don't download their own exclusives, man. They're not mm-hmm. playing their exclusives. They're not. They're playing multi platform games. Now, if Microsoft were to announce the top twenty downloaded games on uh, Xbox One last year, I can guarantee you there's going to be more than one exclusive. You're going to see Gears Ultimate. You're going to see Rise of the Tomb Raider. You're going to see Halo 5. You're going to see Forza Motorsport 6. You're going to see Rare Replay. You're going to see Ori and the Blind Forest. You're going to see their big exclusives on that list, right? And I think that that's more than obvious. So I think we can say myth busted when it comes to this. And I get so tired, so goddamn tired of all the uh, the list wars and all this bullshit. We now have factual proof that people aren't downloading the PlayStation exclusives. Everybody talks up. J-Stars, um, Until Dawn, um, <laughs> God of War 3. Where's the Uncharted collection on no, here, folks? All they do, they game fly or they red box these games. That's all they do, man. Yeah, they where's The Order, 1886? Where's uh, the Uncharted collection? Where's Tearaway? Where's Godzilla? Where's any of these games that you motherfuckers hype up? You guys are talking about these games, and they're nowhere to be found on this list. Yep. It's crickets, and it's a, man. And it's official. And it's official. I mean, this is an official list, and there's no games on here. You know, there's none of the exclusives. Bloodborne, that's it. And that's not even, I mean, and that's such a niche title. Is that what PlayStation owners are reduced to? You're forced to play these impossible-ass tough games? You know what I'm saying? Like, look, if you're a real gamer, man, get be a multi-console gamer. You know what I'm saying? Like, if you're one of those hardcore PlayStation dudes, see how life is on the other side. You know, like me... I have a PlayStation 4. I know that things are definitely greener on the Xbox side, but that doesn't mean if something good comes out on PlayStation that I won't get it. You know, that's part I will of the... get one if, if they show me some good stuff. Yeah, I mean, I, look, I need to see I, it. First. I'm not going to go put out that money for a console and let it collect dust. I'm not going to do it. I mean, see, that's, I can't if, do it. If Horizon Event Zero, if that's any good, then I may consider buying it used. But other than that, it's pretty much like this. <laughs> it is because what? What? All right, you're talking one game. What other games are you gonna buy a console at that price and just let it sit there to play one game? Yeah. Well, you know, what, next gen told me. mind. When that, when I was gonna buy my PS4, next gen told me he's like, "Don't do it." He goes, "You're a Xbox dude." He says, "You're gonna play multiplats on your Xbox. You're gonna play the Xbox exclusives. It's not gonna leave you a lot of time uh, to play anything else." And he he was right. You know. Um, there, I don't have a lot of time to play PlayStation stuff because my friends are on Xbox. Uh, the games, for the most part, that I want to play are on Xbox. You can't play with your friends on even if you had friends on PS4. You can't play with them. Well, yeah, I'm not a I'm not a um, PlayStation Plus well, subscriber crap. anymore. Well, but... no, no, crap! If your house is cold, you could always turn it on. You know what I mean? Yeah, <laughs> you could. I get it. Yeah, like it is, and it's you know, I, if I ever need a flashlight, but I you just gotta turn admit, next gen is always right. 
Oh yeah, he's he's it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it, look, it's a good it's a good door stopper. You know what I'm saying? It's it's a good space heater. It's useful for a few things. You know what I'm saying? So that's all I can say. Yeah. Oh, I never thought of it to use for a door stopper. That's pretty. Yeah. So so I mean like there's their top twenty again. Eighteen of those of the top twenty downloaded are on Xbox One. I have most of them on Xbox One. Um. You know, it's it's kind of unfortunate that that's what go, what's selling so well these days. You know what I mean? Because you can sit there and say, well, the 360 did that too. Well, they did that after 2010 because 2010 they had uh, quite a few exclusives come out. Um, so maybe 2011 on. So that's still five years early of exclusives. Uh, PlayStation 4 hasn't really hit that yet. You know, where's their big known exclusives, and where's their? And you know, not we got on Microsoft a bit earlier, saying, "Hey, where's your dates? You lock in your dates for these games that, that you've announced for this year. We want to know." Um, Sony has to do the same thing. What do they have that's actually locked in aside from like Uncharted and Street Fighter? You know, like this Horizon game, their Last Guardian game. Um, these supposed big games don't really have any kind of locked in dates. I just think that I don't think not, we're gonna. I don't Uncharted think Uncharted doesn't have a locked in date. They push that back. No, Uncharted has a lot. They're saying it's gonna come out what April twenty sixth or eighth or whatever it is. Yeah. Yeah. Well, so is, well, now they delayed, it, they they delayed it for over a month. Yeah. Yeah. So so I mean like hopefully it comes out because that's why. That you know, that's why uh, you know that's why I bought a PS4. <laughs> so I'm hoping that that game actually does come out. But anyway, man, thank you guys for joining us. Uh, sorry, like Mooch and stuff couldn't be here, but we still had a pretty good show. And uh, make sure you guys go subscribe to Iron Wolf and uh, Titanfall Princess, uh, and we'll catch you guys here next well, week. I'd like to do one shout out, if I may, to uh, Grand Gross. Okay. Well, shout out to you, sir. <laughs> uh, at least you're nicer this time. Yeah. Of, when I do shout outs talking about people that don't even know who they are, you mistake. Well we thought we thought you were saying someone else who's big, who's a big time hater, so we were like, Yeah, hey, okay, No, that person know. that person I said supported me through all that bullshit. Oh, okay, he well blanket. he was very cool. He was always talking good shit about me and telling people leave me alone. And and, yeah. and by the way, you've got um your Twitch streams going on. I I joined, I was watching one of those yesterday, it was very entertaining. Um <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so so make sure you guys yeah, check so I out. Just, I just want to give one shout-out quickly. Uh, shout-out to all you ponies out there that keep dancing <laughs> on the comment section. Keep keep dancing. And to you Xbox guys out there, just keep it Xbox, man. Exactly, and we'll catch you guys next week, man. Thanks for joining us. Rack them up.